Welcome to USA News Channel, please like and subscribe for the first get new video update from us, thank you. Now with the heaviest international sanctions placed on North Korea over the regime's uh, missile and nuclear programs, the Wall Street Journal says Pyongyang is starting to feel the sting. Lee Sung Jae reports. Our actions are part of the ongoing maximum economic pressure campaign to cut off sources of revenue that this regime derives from UN and US prohibitive trade to fund its nuclear and ballistic missile programs. Added that the measures are aimed at stopping shipments of oil from reaching North Korea. Washington has also warned that it will impose sanctions on those who enable shipping to and from North Korea. Meanwhile, the U.S. President Donald Trump has said that if sanctions on Pyongyang don't work, Washington will have to go to, quote, phase two, which he described as very unfortunate for the world. If the sanctions don't work, we'll have to go phase two. Phase two may be a very rough thing, it may be very, very unfortunate for the world, but hopefully the sanctions will work. Trump made the remarks at a press conference with the visiting Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull. The U.S. President added that his administration's strategy towards North Korea is strongly supported by the global community. Pyongyang is already under a host of international and U.S. sanctions over its nuclear and missile programs. The North says that it needs the program to deter any U.S. aggression. The latest U.S. sanctions come at a time when North and South Korea are trying to ease the tensions on the Korean Peninsula. China a nation which has long been criticized by the U.S. for supporting North Korea appears to be ramping up enforcement of international sanctions, which the U.S. hopes will force the communist state to abandon its nuclear ambitions. According to a report by the Wall Street Journal, recent sanctions are slamming local Chinese businesses along the border and are starting to impact North Korea with factory closures, price rises, and power shortages in some areas. According to researchers and foreign officials monitoring the North, the impact is likely to intensify this year as the regime runs short of foreign currency and could trigger an economic crisis by 2019. Despite illegal smuggling persisting across the river that forms the border with China and on a larger scale at sea, China's imports from North Korea dropped by a third in 2017 and in December were down 82 percent from a year earlier. In addition, Chinese exports to North Korea declined year-on-year year every month since July, with oil product exports falling to almost zero since October. And while this may mean losses for China, especially in border regions, China's foreign ministry says Beijing would continue enforcing UN sanctions. On Thursday, North Korea slammed the U.S. for trying to stifle them through sanctions and stated that President Trump's recent warning of a phase two against Pyongyang would not work. An English-language statement by the North's foreign ministry added that they prepared their own formula to counter it. Last week, President Trump warned there would be a second stage of action if the latest U.S. sanctions fail to work. The new punitive measures target 27 shipping and trade companies, 28 vessels, and one individual suspected of helping North Korea evade existing sanctions. Isn't it? North Korea's No Dong Shinmun said in a commentary on Wednesday that its nuclear arsenal was purely for self-defense and to decisively tackle nuclear threats from the United States. The commentary said the regime didn't develop a nuclear force and an intercontinental ballistic missile at high costs just to target South Korea. The publication also say the U.S. was the aggressor, criticizing Washington for saying that the North nukes were meant to be used for unifying the two Koreas through war. The commentary even noted that there were voices in South Korea claiming that the North nuclear weapons were a strategic asset to safeguard security on the Korean peninsula. It criticized the U.S. for being recklessly paranoid about war and disturbing the reconciliation and unity of the two Koreas. The commentary criticized the U.S. and Japan for spoiling the hard-won amicable atmosphere that Seoul and Pyongyang achieved through the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. It added that the resumption of joint Seoul Washington military exercises is a vicious challenge to peace on the Korean Peninsula. 
However, the commentary did say Pyongyang was ready for both dialogue on war, adding that if the U.S. attacks North Korea, it will face stern countermeasures from the regime's army and people. Vladimir Putin delivering his annual State of the Nation address in a grand exhibition hall just outside the Kremlin. The speech coming just 17 days before the Russian presidential election. And as the U.S. gets ready to sell more than 200 anti-tank missiles to Ukraine to defend itself against Russian-backed forces. Lucas Tomlinson joins us now live from the Pentagon with more on this. Hey, Lucas. Hey, Shannon. Russian President Vladimir Putin boasted about new nuclear weapons in his arsenal capable of striking the United States. Russia was and remains a big nuclear state. But no, no one wanted to speak with us constructively. No one has listened to us. You listen to us now. In a address to Parliament in Moscow, Putin unveiled in a video a hypersonic missile with nuke warheads capable of traveling over 15,000 miles per hour outside the range of current U.S. missile defenses. A nuclear-powered cruise missile with unlimited range and a nuclear-tipped nuclear-powered torpedo capable of crossing the ocean. But U.S. officials tell Fox News these weapons are still under development, and the nuclear-powered cruise missile recently crashed during testing in the Arctic, raising environmental concerns. The Pentagon says Russia has been developing these weapons over the past decade. One of the reasons Defense Secretary Mattis recently called for building two new low-yield nukes to counter the Russian threat. The Russian propaganda video also showed missiles about to strike Florida. The State Department called it another case of Russian fear-mongering. We don't think uh, that kind of imagery, um, seeing uh, the portrayal in a cheesy video of um, that kind of attack being conducted on the United States as being uh, a responsible action. We're not surprised by the statements, and the American people should rest assured that we are fully prepared. U.S. officials say Russia is worried about the Pentagon's plan to build a sea-launched nuclear-tipped cruise missile, the kind deployed aboard U.S. Navy warships during the Cold War. The other low-yield nuke will deploy aboard ballistic missile submarines. Several points of the renewed U.S. nuclear strategy, which lower the threshold of using nuclear weapons, provokes great concern. U.S. officials say it's not about missile defense, it's about deterrence. Any attack on the United States will be met with a massive nuclear response. The Cold War phrase, mutually assured destruction, is very much relevant tonight. Shannon? An hour in, and a speech that had seemed relentlessly domestic suddenly took an explosive turn. No one expected Vladimir Putin's annual address to Parliament to involve advanced missile systems and strategic weapons amid talk of job creation and better roads in the years ahead. It was a response, he said, to years of unchecked advances by the United States in missile defense. Russia has always been a big nuclear state. No one wanted to speak constructively with us in the past. No one wanted to listen. Well, listen to us now. One missile in development, Putin explained, could travel the globe with unlimited range and entirely undetected by radar defense systems. Less than three weeks before the presidential election, it was all greeted with ecstatic applause by Russia's political elite. Its full impact may have been intended for a domestic audience, but there was more than a hint of menace in Putin's warning that any outside threat would be met with annihilation. Russia's current uh, defense spending is only about one-tenth of that of the United States. And obviously combined NATO defense spending is, uh, is even much larger than that of the US. Um, the Trump administration announced plans to increase defense spending. Um, and Russia, with its economic uh, conditions, uh, is unlikely to be able to spend much more than it currently does. Um, I don't think there will be a real uh, arms race. After 18 years in power, this was Vladimir Putin reminding Russians that their country is a world power once again. The strength of its conventional military on full display in Syria, he said, its nuclear capabilities now soon to be more than a match for U.S. might. Jonah Hull, Al Jazeera, Moscow. Right.